I always like coming back to the two fundamental operations of linear algebra that underpin everything that we do. We've got vector addition, where you could take the tip to tail addition of two vectors, and we have scalar multiplication, where you can take a particular vector and you can stretch it out by a multiple, say, of two. Now, what I want to accomplish in this video is to come up with a linear algebra analog of the idea of a subset. A subset generally is if you take the entire space, like say the plane, you just carve out some portion of it that you're interested in. Maybe it's a line, maybe it's a disk, who knows? Some smaller region of the larger thing. And in calculus, we use this all the time. A lot of functions, for example, aren't defined everywhere, but you can restrict your domain. And if you look at a smaller set, then you could define your functions on that smaller set. Well, what is the analog of that concept in linear algebra? Because if we're doing anything in linear algebra, we want to play nice with the two operations we have, with the vector addition and the scalar multiplication. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to define a subspace. And a subspace is this. It is just a subset, so some collection of the points and whatever you're considering. Right now we're talking about a vector space, so we're looking at a subset of the vectors. But your subspace needs to obey a couple of different rules. It needs to have the zero vector be in your set. It says that if you've got two different vectors who are already in the set, you can add them and you also get into the set. Secondly, if you've got some vector that's in your subspace, then if you multiply it by any factor, that multiplied version also has to be in your subspace. And finally, if you have two different vectors both in your subspace, if you can tip to tail addition them, they're also going to be in the subspace. The way we say this in English for the last two properties is that our subspace is closed under scalar multiplication and closed under vector addition. Which just means that you can do as many scalar multiplications as you want, as many vector additions as you want, and you remain in the subspace. Okay, so that's our definition, and I like this because now all the linear algebra we were doing, we can do it on a subspace because all of linear algebra is basically just doing scalar multiplications and vector additions. So subspaces are basically the subsets where you can do linear algebra. Okay, let's see a few different examples. Okay, so I've got some vector here. It is living inside of this green subset. Now the question is, is this subset a subspace? As in, does it obey our three different properties? Well, let's see. First of all, the zero vector does indeed live in this thing. We have this zero vector. So yes, first property is checked. Second property, okay, I have this red vector. Let's multiply it by two. Let's do a scalar multiplication. But now my vector has left the subset. And so I don't have the second property and therefore this is not a subspace. This sort of random blob I put down is a subset, but not a subspace. And in fact, there's sort of a lesson here, which is that if I've got one vector and scaling it to sort of send stuff along a line, probably I need to have at the very least infinite lines if I'm going to be talking about subspaces. So let's see that example. Okay, I have my infinite line here. Wonderful. So zero vectors on that. That works. If I take this vector and I say multiply it by a factor of two, it's still on the line. So yep, that one works as well. And then if I take the red vector, but I add some other vector, some sort of yellow vector to this, well, how do I add these in the tip to tail manner? So I line them up, the red, then the yellow, and I'm still on the line. So all three of my properties are indeed true. And therefore lines through the origin are gonna be subspaces. You can move this line wherever you want, but it has to go through the origin. Well. Does it have to go through the origin? Uh, let's try that. Let's, okay, let's now look at a line that does not go through the origin. So here's an example. Now, you might just say, look, Trevor, this is actually really easy. This zero vector is not a line. So clearly this is not going to be a subspace. But then you might ask, well, hold on. Why are you even asking? Why are you demanding that the zero vector is on here? So let me show you a few other reasons why this fails. Okay, we've got this one vector on it. What about if I multiply it by two? If I stretch this out? Well, then it immediately leaves. So indeed, the second property is also false. All right, what if I take one vector on the line and a second vector on the line? Well, okay, if I want to add them, I have to add them up in my tip to tail way, and again, I get off the line, and so my third property is false. So a line not through the origin is really not through the origin. It wasn't just this first property that violated it. In fact, what is the role of the first property anyways? Uh, if you look at the second property, if I've got any vector, I can multiply it by zero, and I get the zero vector. So in fact, any subspace is always going to have the zero vector by the second property, except one. It's the empty set. The empty set where you don't have anything to begin with, and so you can't multiply by zero. So really the only role of the first property that says zero has to be in there is to get rid of the sort of boring trivial case of the empty set. 
Indeed, a lot of our theorems are going to be a little bit nicer in the future, which you don't ever have to worry about the empty set. So we're just going to put that right there in our definition. You need to have the zero vector in it, even though it's kind of a consequence in every case but the empty set. Two more slightly pathological examples, but they're important ones. This one is everything, all of Rn, or in this case, R2. So I just sort of shaded everything green. Well, this almost trivially is going to be a subspace. Got the zero vector because it's got everything. If I add any pair of vectors, they're going to clearly just be in there. They can't leave it. If I stretch them, they can't leave it. So, so this is going to be a subspace. It's a sort of trivial subspace, a subspace that's everything. The other trivial one is the one that's the smallest possible one. It's just zero. I know there's a green dot there right at zero. Well, the zero vector's on there. If I take the zero vector, I multiply it by two, I get the zero vector, which is by definition in there. If I take the zero vector and add another y, which can only be the zero vector, sum of two zero vectors is the zero vector. So indeed, this obeys all of my different properties. And so the set that is just the zero vector is a subspace as well. So we've seen a variety of these different subspaces. And subspaces we can think of, there are the places where linear algebra does work. They're closed under vector addition, they're closed under scalar multiplication, they've got the zero vector, and so I can do anything that I've ever done in linear algebra restricted down to subspaces.